Hello and welcome to Homemade Mathematics. My name is Sierra and today I'm going to be showing you how to multiply and divide integers. We will be talking about a couple of things. First, we're going to look at how it works and why it works. Then we'll look at some basic examples. And then we'll end with some real world problems because why do we want to learn this unless we have a use for it? So I'm going to start with multiplication and I'm going to start with something that should look pretty familiar to you. Right, we should know our basic multiplication, right? We know anything times one is just itself, right? That is our identity property of multiplication. Um, and those properties are really important to know because they tell us how numbers work. So we know if we take anything times one, it's just gonna be itself. So two times one, two. Three times one, three. Four times one, four. And that's just going to keep going on forever. But what if we multiply a negative by one? Right, so like we said, that identity property tells us if we take anything times one, it's just itself. So we have one times a negative two, negative two. One times a negative three, negative three. One times negative four, negative four, and so on. So you can see when we have a positive times a positive, you guys already knew we're going to get a positive. However, if I have a positive times a negative, I'm getting a negative. Okay, what if I flipped that? So what if instead I put the negative on one and I left uh, my second number as a positive? So negative one times two, negative one times three, negative one times four. If you look at these two problems, the only thing I changed is I distributed my negative sign to the other number, right? Instead of being on the two, now it's on one. So it's the same thing. All we did was we moved that negative sign. So it's still gonna stay negative two. Same thing with my three and four, right? Negative one times three, negative three, negative one times four, negative four, right? So two positives get us a positive, a positive and a negative, always going to get us a negative, but what about if we have two negatives? So multiplying with two negatives is something that I found very difficult to actually explain how it works. Um, so one way is you could create a sequence and see how that works out. Um, so what I mean by that is if I took negative two times a positive two, we get negative four. Right? Negative times positive. If I did negative 2 times 1, negative times positive, negative 2. If I do negative 2 times 0, we're going to get 0. So if I'm going 2, 1, 0, what number would come after that 0? Right? We're going down by 1 each time, so 0 minus 1. This time we're going to be taking our negative 2 times negative 1. Right, we're following this sequence here. Negative 4 to negative 2, we went up 2. Negative 2 to 0, again, we went up 2. So what do you think we're going to go from 0 to the next one? We're going to go up 2. So you can see, you know, I could continue that negative 2 times negative 2, positive 4, negative 2 times negative 3, positive 6. We're going to see our double negatives are going to get us a positive. Another way that I think... I remember the best is thinking of it as a, a uh, double opposite. So what I mean by that is we talked about opposites um, and what those look like. So for example, the opposite of three is negative three. Right? Our negative signs mean opposite. This time we have one opposite, two opposites. So we have one times two, which gets me two. The opposite of 2 would be negative 2. The opposite of negative 2 would bring us back to positive 2. Right, so those double negatives are going to cancel each other out to make a positive. So negative 1 times negative 3, positive 3. Negative 1 times negative 4, positive 4. All right, so now we have our nice little rules that we can use for multiplication. Positive and a positive, this is a positive. A negative and a negative also gets us a positive. 
but if we only have one negative, a positive and a negative, or a negative and a positive, our answer is going to be negative. Speaking of our properties, we should also know that division is just the opposite operation of multiplication. So I could take any of these and put them backwards um, and do multiplication and, or division instead of multiplication, and it should work out to be the same thing, right? Because they're just opposites of each other. So that means we can use our same rules we just talked about for multiplication, also for division. All right, so we have, for example, negative four divided by two would get us negative two. Negative two divided by one would get us negative two. So again, those rules are working the same. Two positives, it stays positive. Two negatives, they cancel each other out and become positive. A positive and a negative, that's where you have a negative. So the way I like to remember this is when multiplying and dividing, your negatives come in pairs, all right? Our negatives are lonely, they need a friend, okay? If they don't have a friend, they're not happy, so you better put their friend in the answer, all right? So let's kind of use that to look at a few examples. Now I have some examples up here for us so we can use this rule that we just discovered. When we're multiplying and dividing, our negatives come in pairs. So if they already have a pair, we know it's gonna be positive. If there's only one negative and it does not have its friend, you need to give it one in the answer. All right, so if you want to, go ahead and pause here. Give these five problems a try. Otherwise, continue watching and we'll go over them together. Okay, so my first one here, we're just gonna do the operation with our number. So four times five gets us 20. But then we need to decide, is it positive or negative? All right, so if you look here, I only have one negative. So my negative does not have his friend, he does not have his buddy, so we need to give him it in his answer, negative 20. And we could check that if we did it backwards, a negative 20 divided by a negative five, they have their pair, is gonna get me positive four. All right, our next one here, we are dividing. So 32 divided by eight gets us four. And then again, my negative does not have a pair, so we need to give it one in the answer. If we did it backwards, negative four times eight would get me negative 32. All right, here we have this slash symbol, which we should know um, looks like a fraction bar, which a fraction really just means divide. So um, negative 36 divided by negative six, if we do 36 divided by six, we get six. And in this question, my negatives have their pairs. They're going to cancel out to give us a positive 6. These last two are a little different because this time we have three numbers, but that does not matter. It does not change anything. Our negatives still have to come in pairs. So as you can see here, we're going to start with our numbers and multiply it out. 2 times 3 is 6 times 4 is 24. And then you can see I only have one negative, which it needs its pair. So our answer needs to be negative. All right. You could also um, take it one step at a time and you could do two times negative three is negative six. And then negative six times four gets you negative 24. All right, you could actually do it backwards as well. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry mama. All right, you could actually do it backwards as well. Oh my gosh. You can also do it backwards um, because multiplication, it does not matter the order you go in. All right, last one here. We have negative seven times negative three times negative one. All right, so our negative seven times our negative three, those are gonna cancel each other out to get us our 21, but then we're taking it times another negative. So 21 times negative one would get us negative 21, right? Because if you look at this, the original problem, those two negatives have a pair, so they have their buddy, but this one does not. So we need to make sure we give it to them in the answer. So it's very important to know how to do these types of problems, but what's even more important is being able to apply these skills to something in the real world. So I'm gonna put up two real world problems here. 
My first real world example up here says, you and eight friends throw a pizza party. If you each put in $5, how much did you spend total? I see this type of problem a lot and I see it trick a lot of people. All right, so a lot of people see, okay, there's eight people, each person is spending $5 each. So we're gonna take our eight times five and we're gonna get 40. Okay, not the answer. Yes, there are eight friends, but there's also you. So there's really nine people. So we need to be taking our nine times our five, except for this is not money we're receiving. This is money we are spending, right? So we actually should be taking our nine, you and your friends, times, and you're spending $5, so that would be a negative five, which then our answer would be negative $45. All right, remember with our word problems, they always need a label. In this case, our label is that dollar sign. I wanted to make this last example challenging. So if you think you can try it, go ahead, try it on your own, see if you can figure it out. Otherwise, just keep watching and we'll go over it. So this problem says you're at an elevation of 840 meters. So I think that's an important number. Um, so I kind of like to mark my word problems with things that I think are important. So 840 meters, it's important to know where I'm starting from. And it also tells me the speed I'm hiking down. I'm hiking down at 60 meters per minute. So every minute that goes down, I'm going down another 60 meters down this mountain. They want to know what our elevation is going to be after 30 minutes. So that time period is also important. All right, we need to know where we started, how fast we're going down, and how long we're going down to be able to tell where we are now. So you might notice this is actually a multiple step problem. We can't just do this in one step like our last one where we just took 9 times negative 5. Okay, first we have to figure out how much we actually traveled in the 30 minutes. And then once we know how far we've traveled and we know where we started, what do you think we're gonna do there? Okay, we know where we're at, we know how much we go down, so we'd wanna subtract that off from our starting point. All right, so that's kind of the route we're gonna take. So let's start with finding how much we traveled first. Right, we know we're going 60 meters every minute, and we're doing that for 30 minutes. All right, so we could add up 60 30 times, or we know the operation for that is just what is 60 times 30. All right, but I'm not climbing 60 meters. I'm not going up this mountain. They told me I'm hiking down. So that's actually a negative 60 and time's always gonna be positive, can't have negative time. All right, so negative 60 times a negative 30, we have a negative times a positive, so my negative needs its pair. All right, six times three, that's 13, zero times two, zero, we're gonna add our zeros there. So I find out I traveled 18,000 meters down. Okay, look where I started. Am I still above sea level? If I started at 840 and I went down 1800, I'm not. All right, so the problem we have now is 840 minus 1800. If you watch my subtraction or addition um, video, you'll know that we can turn any subtraction into addition by adding the opposite. And when I'm adding, if I have a positive and a negative, I'm gonna take my largest number minus my smaller and take the sign of the bigger number. Okay, again, if that was confusing to you and you need some review on your adding and subtraction rules, I do have videos for those, so go check those out. So we wanna take our bigger number minus our smaller number if we're ignoring the sign. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that over here. So we have 1800 minus 840, zero minus zero is zero, zero minus four we have to borrow, 
10 minus 4 is 6. Again, we have to borrow. And we get 960. That's the difference. And we subtracted. But then remember, with our signs, we have to take the sign of the larger number. Because I had 840 positives, but I had 1,800 negatives. So since I had more negatives, that means I'm going to be left with negative 960. And remember, we need our label, which our label for this one would be meters. That is our elevation. Just like my past couple of videos, I also have a game that you can play to practice this. Um, it is War 2.0, and if you've played that for adding and subtracting, you'll see that you can easily adjust that game to practice multiplying and dividing. All right, so if you want, I'm going to go ahead and put the link up here for War 2.0 um, as a fun game. So an alternative to worksheets, an alternative to flashcards, something different. And if you want a game to play this, I'll go ahead and link that for you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or any requests for future videos, please comment that, those down below. And make sure you subscribe so you never miss a video from me. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.